The autumn wind is a pirate, lustering in from sea, with a rollicking song he sweeps along, swaggering boisterously. His face is weather-beaten. He wears a hooded sash, with a silver hat about his head, and a bristling black mustache. He growls as he storms the country, a villain big and bold. And the trees all shake and quiver and quake as he robs them of their gold. The autumn wind is a raider, pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. Honestly, between the fads, I forgot to wear my jersey yesterday as I was so excited to talk about horse heads. And the fact that I got up super duper late this morning. I mean, I did go to bed early. I did go to bed late, but still. I wasn't going to make it any worse by forgetting to do the Autumn Wind poem. Especially after the Raiders won. Which I did predict, by the way. So, before I get into how my picks went off overall, I should probably talk about this week's episode of Amphibia before I forget to do that, too. Man. You forget to do something in one day and every, this, this chaos ensues. So, let's see. That pretty much everything I just described was my low. But, you know, my high was I got to spend the evening with my dad. And, you know, we got uh, pizza and wings from Picnic Pizza. We got a white garlic pizza and a dozen medium wings. They're very good. And another part of my high is I think this is probably the best I've done in terms of making NFL picks. I mean, I couldn't get 16 teams, I believe, because um, because someone had a bye week this week, I think, maybe. Although, my Cowboys also won, too. And they're going, and they have a bye next week, so. Yeah, 5-1 and one going into the bye. I'm feeling pretty good about that right now. I mean, the optic is about as good as you'd hope for, actually. So, we have that. And my act of kindness was, um, I actually helped uh, do some of the uh, remaining laundry that, I, that had to be done, as well as I helped clean the table up after dinner. So... With that said, good morning and happy Monday, everybody. Yeah, that's, even, that's why I feel even more bad about the fact that, you know, I got up late because it's Monday. You should no one if you get up late on Mondays, it's bad. <laughs> All right, so before I get into this week's episodes of this week, oh, it's episode, but again, two eleven minute segments of Amphibia. I want to make one thing clear. This was still a good episode, hands down. It's just me having been around the block many times in terms of what types of episodes of a show there are. This is the sort of formula that, well, the first half was. Is the first half of formula, I'm not particularly you know, fond of, because the sort of, ep- well, here's how the episode breaks down. Basically, it was two 11-minute segments called a Tie Feud and Adventures in Cat Sitting. Now, Tie Feud is the one in which the formula is that I'm not a fan of. And basically, the premise is, Sprig actually wants to be well, the episode first starts off with Sprig being incredibly rude, like, at the breakfast table and stuff. And I'm like, dude, really? Why are you? And then Sprig's like, don't worry. We're family. And like, no, you're not. Just because Anne is a planner doesn't mean you're a Voomshoy, which is true. I mean, that basically... It's a sort of episode where after Sprig learns that he's not technically part of Anne's family, he's literally doing everything in his power 
to um, be like, oh, I'll be part of this family. And literally everyone is telling him, dude, stop doing it. Don't do it. And he continues to do it anyway. I mean, yeah, I know Sprig is only a kid. And his heart is technically in the right place. But, dude, like, there's better ways to go about doing what you're trying to do than this. Like, it's not cool. But eventually, the episode does get resolved. You know, Sprague eventually does get scolded by Mrs. Voontroy, and, you know, he's happy that he's getting scolded, funny enough. So, in terms of how, like, episodes like this go, I've seen worse. Much worse. Honestly, if you really want to see an episode like that that's really bad, or really a whole bunch of episodes, just watch, like, the latter half of Fox's Home for Imaginary Friends. Because a lot of people started disliking Blue Regard Q Kazoo because of this. I'm just saying. But the next episode was better. I mean, it is also technically a formula I'm not a big fan of, but this was done much better. And that was called The Dungeons and Cat Sitting, where Hot Pop is trying to explain to Sprig and Polly that, you know, at this point, they've been there long enough where they're no longer guests, they're freeloaders. At least that's what Hot Pop thinks. So he wants to, um, you know, make things right and, you know, not be considered a freeloader, which is no one wants to be a freeloader. Give him credit for that. So he and the planner family decided to take Domino, Anne's cat, to the vet, which they do, but it's the sort of thing where, you know, eventually they were, you know, they do stuff that would totally in real life get them caught by the fact that they're frogs, you know, the cat obviously escapes, and, you know, shenanigans ensue. And at the end of the episode, they wind up calling Mr. Voonchoy, Anne's father, and, you know, he helps, like, send them home and stuff because they couldn't take the bus. And Hot Pop's all crying, like, I don't want you to, con I don't want you to consider me a freeloader. Which, again, give him credit for, again, his heart's in there. That's one thing that I can sort of forgive about these sorts of episodes. Like, the main character's, fo like, the focus of the main character, like, their heart is in the right place. I can, I can forgive him for that. It's just everything else that kind of, again, it's just cliche and I've already seen it before. And it's not that appealing to me. Anyway, um, sorry, I'm having trouble keeping my eyes open. Yeah, I'm really tired. Sorry. Um, the end of the episode basically has Mr. Voontroy saying to, you know, hop up. Listen, you took Anne into your home and kept her and fed her for five months. You don't owe us anything, which... That's true. And that's why this episode is technically better because that's the sort of resolution I can get behind. Again, the formula for these sorts of episodes I'm not a fan of, but the message can be clear. And by all accounts, they're far from being the worst examples of these sorts of episodes. I mean, shows like Rocket Power and Fox's Own for Imaginary Friends were much worse about that than... than um than what this episode was. Plus, Anthony has been more consistent about avoiding these sorts of cliches. So again, I can give it a pass. Man, rocket power. I just can't believe it. I can't believe I just mentioned rocket power. It was, it was a show for its time. It was definitely a time capsule for like the 90s. You can tell it was a time capsule because Here's the thing, go ahead and go back and watch Rock the Power and listen to some of the dialogue. A good show doesn't use slang in their dialogue. Because, you know, slang was, the slang was obviously written for the time the episode was being made. But by the time that the episode aired, no one's using that slang anymore.
again, so a little, for, a little uh, tip for those who actually want to make a show and want to get into writing a show's dialogue, don't use slang. At least not like slang that's going to be outdated in a few months. So, there you go. Um, now I think we can get into my NFL pick for the day. And let's see what picks I was uh, wrong about. Or right about. Alrighty then. Okay, so, um, let's see. So I was already right about the Buccaneers and the Eagles. I was actually wrong about the Jaguars winning. That was really something special. Okay. I was right about the Vikings. I was right about the Ravens. I was right about the Rams. I was really right about the Colts. I was right about the Chiefs. I was right about the Packers. I was right about the Bengals. I was really right about the Cardinals. You know me, of course, I was right about my Cowboys. I was right about the Raiders, hence why I did the Autumn Wind poem at the very beginning of the game. And I was wrong about the Steelers. Wow. I, I legit only got, yeah, I only got like two wrong. So that means I got one, two, three, four, we got the games, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11. Yeah. I already got 11 right. But if I only got two wrong, then... Oh, right. Because some teams have um, bye weeks now. So now, there's only going to be uh, 14 uh, games in a week instead of uh, 16. Yeah, I'm looking at the rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yep. Only four. So yeah, four teams have a bye week going forward. So, from now on, it's going to be out of 14 instead of every, out of every 16. So, I'm 11. So, the worst I can be is 11 and 4 now. Or I could be 12 and 2. So, yeah. There we go. Sorry if yesterday's episode was kind of emotional for me. But, again, you know... One thing I didn't mention yesterday was when I said that this game was big, again, with the game the Horseheads plays on Friday, I'm not kidding. For a matter of perspective, when Horseheads beat Elmira, we beat them in overtime, 17-14, if you remember. Union Endicott beat them 41-14. to the odds could not be more against us. Again, we have enough build back. But I think the horse says Blue Raiders can pull it off. And really, I just said that because I forgot I was supposed to make an NFL pick right now. Oh. It's the Bills and the Titans? Oh, please, let's go, Buffalo. That's easy. I don't even need to think about that one. It's... I'm just going to have that be my answer. Let's go, Buffalo. Although, here's the thing. The reason why it, what I'm about to say is funny is because, obviously, for a long time, Buffalo really wasn't very good. So, pretty much all their games were on Sundays. And so, with Buffalo being as good as, as they are, they're getting more and more, you know, primetime games. You know, Sunday, Monday night. And I keep seeing a bunch of Buffalo Bills related memes in which, you know, they're supposed, the Bills are supposed to be playing it's Sunday, so you'd think the Bills would be playing today, but they either have a Sunday night game or, you know, they play on Monday night, like tonight they're playing on Monday night. And the Bills fans are just going crazy and bored, not knowing what to do with themselves. I mean, dude, listen, I know watching your favorite team is great, but 
you can do other stuff on Sunday. I mean, honestly, if your favorite team's not playing on Sunday, and as long as it's fall, you know, you're upstate New York, go to a bunch of apple orchards or pumpkin patches or, you know, go to do something fall-related. I'm sure you can think of something, right? Like, favorite, share, subscribe, and follow me, especially play on Trinity on YouTube. I never held this video for all of you guys watching Joe Frame. Hopefully, a wonderful, wonderful uh, Monday. Remember, you guys want to talk to me, so we can let it back. Take care and make good choices. See ya.